Cat Williams just read Tyler Perry down to filth for being Oprah's lapdog. Now we all know Cat has never been afraid to call out big Hollywood executives because he's been on their neck for years now. However, he recently sent the whole internet into a frenzy when he went off on Tyler and his best friend, Oprah Winfrey. See, according to Kat, Oprah has always had an agenda to destroy black entertainers in the industry, and she's been using Tyler as a puppet to do it. This ain't the first time Tyler and Oprah have been called out for working hand in hand to destroy people in the industry for their own selfish gain. The craziest thing is, Kat is not the first person to call them out on this. They've also been put on blast by 50 Cent, Ludacris, Dave Chappelle, and Monique for the exact same reasons. Eight years ago, I did a movie called Precious. And on that film, I received $50,000, and that was not my argument because that's what I signed up for. We got labeled as difficult because I said one word, and that was no. I said no to Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, and I said no to Lionsgate. Each one of you said to me, Monique, you're not wrong, but none of y'all in real time was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. When people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? You damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. Now, if you've been active on social media these past couple days, then I know you've heard all the conversation about Oprah and Tyler Perry lowballing and blacklisting multiple black entertainers. This started after Taraji P. Henson called out Oprah for underpaying her to star in the color purple. Where's my raise? I haven't, had, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And almost had to walk away from color purple. Yes, ma'am. Who said what? <laughs> yes, ma'am. But many people were quick to point out that this was not the first time that Oprah had been accused of doing this and that she had been using Tyler as her lapdog to destroy the careers of a lot of people in Hollywood. One of the first people to call her out was Monique. See, Monique exposed Oprah and her lapdog Tyler Perry for blacklisting her and causing her to lose multiple jobs after she refused to do press runs for the movie Precious, which was co-produced by Tyler and Oprah and directed by Lee Daniels. See, according to Monique, she was paid a mere 50K to be the supporting lead in the movie, which was already barely enough. Considering the blockbuster hit the film went on to be, Oprah and Tyler still shamelessly had the guts to demand her to go on a press run to promote the movie without getting paid an extra penny. Monique then clapped back by refusing to do the press runs unless she got paid for it. Since it was never in her contract to be jumping from one country to another doing press runs for free. But that pissed Tyler and Oprah off so bad, they started working overtime to destroy her. They flooded the tabloids with all sorts of narratives about her being difficult to work with. So directors and producers would stay away from working with her. You, were, you had difficult well, demands. I want to address it for the order that it went in. And when Mr. Daniels say I had these demands, it shocked me because I was saying to the screen, Don, please ask him what the demands were. Mm -hmm. And actually, there were no demands. There was a request from the movie studio, and they called and requested that I fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival. I simply said I respectfully declined. Because if you can remember at the time, there was a talk show called The Monique Show. I was doing a comedy tour. I was actually in the award season of the awards. And I'm also a wife and I'm a mommy. So when they called, I had a couple days just downtime. I wanted to spend that with my husband and my kids. So when we said we respectfully declined, the movie studio called back again. So when the movie studio says we can't set a precedence and pay you to do this, we didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. They had a request. 
we simply had a request and we they said they couldn't do it and we said we understood that was it as if that ain't bad enough oprah then ordered tyler to trash talk monique to director david tolbert so he wouldn't hire her for an acting gig which tyler did no questions asked room so tyler perry says to me listen you may really want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an oscar award your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, who are you talking to? I'm a black woman. Where do they pay those type of salaries, brother? I said, what I cannot do, Tyler, is work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I cannot go overseas and do this for free, Tyler. So then he goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not going to do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page. Oh, but baby, it gets worse. Oprah then decided to interview Monique's brother, whom Monique had previously accused of SAing her when she was a child, as well as to interview Monique's entire family, whom she's made very clear several times she's not on speaking terms with, because they initially sided with her brother when she told them about what he did to her. Where yeah, Oprah Winfrey and I have a problem is Oprah Winfrey called us out. And she said my brother wanted to come on the show and talk about him molesting me. And he wanted to tell other parents how to look out for molesters. My brother Gerald is a charmer. So my mind thought was, because she said, do you want to come on? I said, I don't want nothing to do with that cat. I said, nigga, I know is up to a scam, but people can change. And who am I to say he hasn't changed? It might really be different. So I don't want to get in the way of that. I just don't want nothing to do with it. She said, if you don't want me to have your brother on the show, I will cancel the show. No show will happen, but I wanted to call you up to see how you felt first. When I hung up that phone, brother, I looked at my husband and I said, that bitch is all right with me. That's a real- She kept it because she- Because she didn't have to call me up. She didn't have to say my brother was coming. She could have just ran with the shit and let it happen. I dig her. So as you can see, Monique made it crystal clear. She had no problems with her brother coming on the show as long as she wasn't brought up. But Oprah decided to ignore every request and drag not just Monique's brother to the show, but her entire family as well, and made the whole interview about Monique. With my brother, my mother, my father, and my other brother. Now, the reason why that means so much is because in the conversation we had about my brother, we then went deeper, and we began to talk about our relationships with our mothers and our fathers, and I shared my relationship with her about my mother as she shared hers with me, which I will never repeat because she shared it with me about her mother and father. It might be something she shared with everybody but made one to make me feel special. I don't know. Nonetheless, it was in our moment. I shared with her that me and my mother was not talking. I shared with her we were in a really bad place. I shared with her I was hurt and, you know, trying to figure this thing out. She never said my mother was coming on that show. Because had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mother, I would have said, shut it down. I don't need the world seeing how greedy my mother is. Shut that down. That's one of the reasons why we don't communicate. Now, despite all the damage that Oprah caused to Monique, she never publicly or privately apologized. And when she was asked about Monique's comments in an interview, she started going on and on about a whole lot of nothing and pretty much just avoided answering the question. I noticed that too, because you're, you're taking the high road on so many different levels and people say negative things about you. Trump, uh, Monique is, is in the media right now. 
Why do you continue to take the high road? Why don't you address it face? Oh my gosh, because it's impossible. It's a law that if you meet negative with negative, you will just have a combusted ne negative force and negative energy. You can't meet negative energy where it is. You have to rise above it. You have to transcend it. You have to be the light. And it only takes a little bit of light to banish the darkness. Mm. It takes a lot of darkness to overcome the light but it takes just a little bit of light. And we are warriors of the light. So I would never stoop to try to meet somebody where they are negatively. Yeah. Don't care who they are. Awesome. Thank oh you very God. much for taking the time like to chat. Yeah, yeah. you brought it. And then there was 50, who also accused Oprah of being against hip hop, specifically the kind of music that he made and even compared her to an Oreo, a black on the outside and a white on the inside after she banned him from ever appearing on her show. He said, I think she caters to older white women. She was completely against everything that was in my music, so she ain't never gonna have me on that show. I'm never gonna reach that platform, which is confirmation of you being a huge success. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then let's at least be enemies. Now, around the same time, Oprah was also called out by Ludacris, who accused her of throwing him under the bus when he appeared on her show to promote his new movie, Crash, alongside his other cast members. During this interview, Oprah barely asked him any questions about the movie, and she kept pressing him about using the N-word in his music. I was, I was there for a crash for the movie. Yeah. And basically, she said something about not agreeing with my music, but she thought I did great in the movie. And of course, I was up there with the whole cast of Crash. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't necessarily feel like that needed to be said. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't agree with my music. And even if you don't agree with certain songs I made, say you don't agree with certain songs, don't say you just don't agree with all of my right. music. Right, right. She then went on to edit out parts of Ludacris' response in order to make him look like a fool on television. She was able to say what she said, and then I, I had my rebuttal. And when I saw the final show, her, her comments were in yeah, there. It was in there, but yours wasn't in there. And mine weren't in there, so it just looked like I kind of took it. Wow. Like, it was just quiet and didn't Are say you that. Yes, did. Dave Chappelle also appeared on Oprah's show after his highly publicized fallout with Comedy Central. Dave talked about why he walked away from a $50 million deal and ran all the way to South Africa to escape the Hollywood elite without telling his wife and kids. So you got up and you walked out and nobody knew where you were going. Did your family know? Nah, well, no, nah, I called my brother. Yeah. Me and my brother, real cool, I called him up, was like, uh, I'm going to Africa. He was like, cool, man, it's good. Did your wife and children know where you were going? No. No, nobody knew? No. I bounced. Now, the, that the sounds a little crazy. It's not crazy because the situation kind of warranted it. Okay. Dave went on to drop a major bombshell when he talked about how he was also forced to wear a dress while shooting a movie with Martin Lawrence. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why are all these brothers going to wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And it, huh? What? Is it a prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. Like, that should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We we're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Ba, 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 ba. You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. 
Oh, but that wasn't all, y'all. Dave also revealed how the producers had a whole nother script written just in case he ended up saying no to wearing the dress. The minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing the dress, I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? <laughs> you know, it's like, so... You gotta take a stink. Kevin Hart was later asked about his thoughts on Dave's comments about black men being forced to wear dresses, and this is what he had to say. Chappelle, another great comedian, said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts? <laughs> and, and is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for... for uh, I definitely haven't ran into to put on the dress. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you have to have... You have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to been challenged, so you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. Like, you look said good no doing that. it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. I'm yeah. a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand. Your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So you know, protecting my brand is is definitely a priority. But just a few months later, Kevin went against his own words when he appeared in a skit on SNL wearing a dress with a whole lace front wig on his head. Kevin received a lot of backlash for this, with some people accusing him of selling his soul and others calling him a hypocrite. He ended up addressing this backlash in a lengthy tweet by saying, I wore a dress on SNL because I thought it was funny. I made that decision. Nobody made it for me. I am my own boss. And just a few weeks after Kevin's SNL skit aired, Cat Williams revealed some very disturbing information about how black men have been forced by the Hollywood elites for years to try and act and dress more feminine. Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking old poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Now, after Kat made these comments, a lot of people started to side-eye Tyler Perry and started to wonder if he's just a Hollywood lap dog being used to effeminate black men in Hollywood. This was later fueled when actor and voice coach Brandon J exposed Tyler for threatening him into playing a role of a gay man in his TV show, Meet the Browns. Jay had originally auditioned and was playing for the role of Joffrey, a stout high school teenager who was being bullied at school. However, Tyler switched it up last minute and decided that Jay's character should be gay and have a crush on his high school bully. Jay said he was uncomfortable because Tyler was already threatening to fire him if he didn't take the role, so he had no choice but to do it. Well, here's a story time about how filming Meet the Browns was the most stressful and hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. I had no idea that Tyler Perry's studio schedule was so drastic. If you're working on a regular network show, they take a whole week to film an episode. Tyler Perry Studios, they film an episode in one day. The character was Jeffrey, a fat high school teenager who was very intellectual who was getting bullied at school. I take two to three days to learn the entire script. On the day of filming, first thing we do is a table read. I know all of my lines. I'm ready to go. So the director, who is Alfonso Ribeiro Carlton in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he starts to block us, telling the actors where to go, where to stand. Mr. Perry comes in, everything changes. So we literally run the entire episode for him and he hates it. Does that mean I have to learn a whole new script? Yes, that's what it means. Mr. Perry on the spot starts rewriting the entire script and he's feeding me the lines to say, and the director is kind of standing on the side like, you better do it because if not, they will fire you. Here is where the shoe hit the fan. So in the middle of Mr. Perry changing up the scenes, he says, you know, I want Jeffrey to be gay and he has a crush on his bully. That's not what I auditioned for. A lot of people dragged Tyler Perry for this and claim the reason why he forced Brandon to play that role was because he's on the DL himself and he was just projecting it onto Brandon's character. 
Now, I wish I could say that's the end of it, but it ain't. Tyler came under fire again when Christian Keys seemingly hinted at Tyler SAing him. He posted a tearful video talking about the time when a certain powerful man in the industry took advantage of him. Same time this person was sexually harassing me for years. Um, he was claiming, you know, that he had multiple young black men on the payroll and they just had to show up when he was when he requested them to be there and clearly that's why it was it felt to him that it was okay to say these things and I, I really I want to have these discussions I want to be transparent with y'all about that I've done my best to forgive this person but it happens it happens um, it's not just women that have to deal with it but it's also men sometimes and even though Christian didn't explicitly mention Tyler most believe it's him because Christian has a long working history with Tyler dating all the way back to 2005 when he appeared in Tyler's film Diary of a Mad Black Woman and most recently in Tyler's new TV show, All the Queen's Men. A lot of people were disgusted by this and started speculating if this is why people like Cat Williams have been on Tyler's neck for so long. Well, Cat finally decided to respond to everything and he went off on Tyler for being Oprah's lapdog and using his power to destroy the careers of black entertainers. He also threw some shade at Tyler and said Tyler plays the role of Medea all the time because he can't play a man in a movie to save his life. Chill, Cat know he is messy as hell for that one. Why would you put that in your, put this in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the uh, believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. Now, Cat Williams might tell you a joke, but he never gonna tell you a lie. Now, as usual, people had their own thoughts to say about this mess, and they wasted no time making it known. Like this person who said, I like Monique and Cat Williams. I do not like Oprah or Tyler Perry. They've shown their true colors plenty of times. I feel bad for Monique and Cat Williams. What's been done to them and said about them is just not right. Another person said, Cat has always had my love and respect. He goes for the jugular when needed. And just like Dave Chappelle, they've tried their hardest to destroy both men. I hope other black men and women will see how both men survived in the public eye. They can do it too. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Kat going off on Tyler for being Oprah's laugh dog? And do y'all think Tyler and Oprah really have an agenda to destroy black entertainers to please the elites in the industry? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.